welcome to Hashtag 52 Needs, and this week we're talking about autonomy. And I have with me Chris Chittenden, who has been involved in the world of coaching since 1994 and worked as a professional coach since 1999. Although he has spent most of his professional life working with leaders and organizations, Chris now puts his energy into helping people in life transition, particularly with people in their 20s. The focus of his work is to help people learn how to navigate the uncertainty of the future and create meaningful and fulfilling lives. And we're on the same page when it comes to that, Chris. Welcome. It's good to see you. It's good to see you too, Angela. Okay, autonomy. Let's talk about autonomy in everyday life. How do we know that we have autonomy? Um, I, th I think the, the way that I start off thinking about that is what does it mean to, to be autonomous in some ways? What, what, does it act, what does that actually mean? And um, for me, looking at it, it, it sort of ends up being about self-determination, a sense mm. of freedom, I think, is the way that people tend to think about autonomy. Um, one of the things that we do in the work that, that I um, have come from is that we sort of take the idea that people live out of core concerns. And one of the core concerns is to be autonomy and, and to be autonomous. And the way that I think about that is, is that it's, uh, it's about being able to author your own life in some ways, to actually sort of define how you want life to be. Um, one of the challenges I think that shows up for people around that is that there are a lot of people who think they are who they are simply be, because of who they were born to be mm. and don't have a sense of being able to author the way that they are in life and, the, and, and to be able to author their life in some ways. Um, the background that then comes out of that, from my point of view, is, is that, um, that everybody is doing that in some ways. We're all making choices about how we want our life to progress in some ways. And the challenge we then find about being autonomous is that other people want us to do things for them or want to be part of their journey as well. And yeah. so we end up in this dynamic of, um, of, of matching up whether we choose what we want to choose or whether we allow other people to choose for us. And then you get a balance between that. So you end up in the balance between the individual and the, and the people that you're in relationship with in some way. So does that have to do with approval seeking behaviors or avoiding disapproval or what is? Uh, I think there are many ways that it, it can, you can look at it. From my point of view, I, I sort of, um, I come from the point of view of um, some linguistic action stuff. And the idea behind that is, is that we take authority for ourselves in how we declare how we want the world to be for us. Um, and that people are doing that in, in harmony or not, but they do it together in some way. Mm -hmm. So when people are in relationship, they're, they're basically making their choices and then working out whether, um, I, for example, I let you impact my future because of a decision that you make, whether I take that on board or vice versa in some way. Mm -hmm. So um, the idea then is that, that you find yourself caught up in this dynamic of authority between people. And there are basically then two ways that, that you do that. One is that... Um, you can seek to control other people, mm -hmm. okay? So if I seek to control you on the basis of what I'm talking about, pretty much what I do is I find ways to force you to choose what I want you to choose. Yeah. I put you into a forced choice situation. If I know, for example, that you are high in approval and that you need to be liked in some way, I can use like that to manipulate you mm -hmm. in, in a certain way to get, get what I want. The other way of doing it is through trust. So we can either build authority through trying to control people or through trusting, yeah. a trust a trust dynamic of some of some sort. And um, unfortunately, what we tend to learn is control. Mm. We think you think about it when you're a little kid. Basically, mm. your parents control you, and we we have this dynamic of of trying to control people right through. Um, the childhood years and in many ways legally I think parents are responsible for their children up to 18 or something along those mm -hmm. lines yeah um and what does that mean well that means that parents are trying to control their kids which means they're trying to choose for their kids and of course kids are growing up wanting to learn to make their own choices yeah. and um so you get this basic tension that happens um between parents and children as they as they grow 
And and for me, um, I sort of have done a fair bit of work with people around me parenting, the idea of parenting. And I have a view that um, parenting basically is about helping human beings grow to be, I guess you would call them autonomous adults, where they are able to make good choices in life. And so the process of parenting is really one of learning or teaching your kids how to make decisions in Mm -hmm. life, not making decisions for them. But I mean, when you look, when I look around and I see the world the way it is at the moment, I mean, we live in an, we live in a nanny state. There are lots of people who make decisions for us now. There are boundaries where, whether we like them or not, they're, they're imposed as in, you know, rules and regulations. And parents are more and more on one hand, they, they, I mean, my experience is they want to be partners in their children's lives. So, you know, I mean, in my generation, we would never, you know, have the bring your parents to work kind of day. Um, whereas these days, I think younger people are really, they, they want their parents' advice. Mm. But it's, I think it's almost flipped to the opposite where parents now, you know, become, it's not, to, it doesn't come from that place of, I know what's best for you from a critical parent. You have no idea, but it comes from that caretaking place of, I need to protect you from this terrible world, this helicopter parenting which also sti- which stifles eco- autonomy just the same way the critical controlling parent does. I, I agree with you to a large extent. Um, certainly the people that I talk to in their 20s, a lot of them talk about feeling part of an anxious generation. Mm, mm. And I, I think it's not even just about what is said directly to people, but it's the narratives that people live within. Yes. Um, about the world being, uh, you know, heading towards crises, whether it's a climate climate crisis or whether it's a political crisis or a national crisis or whatever it happens mm. to be, that um, in some ways it's not just about what decisions we make people, but it, make for people, for our children, for example. It's also associated with the opinions that they form and the stories that they have about how life should be. Mm-hmm. So one, one of the key things that, that shows up for me in the work that I do is, is that pretty much what we do in teaching kids through school is we teach them to provide answers and we teach them to provide answers to other people's questions, not even their own questions. And so, I mean, you and I have worked as coaches for a long time and yeah. we, we earn our money by asking questions. Mm-hmm. And in, in some ways I could easily argue, well, that's a fairly ridiculous thing to be doing, isn't it? Why, why can't people learn to ask their own questions in some way? And I think that's the challenge. So people are actually looking for the answer. They spend their life going through life looking for the answer. Um, And the challenge then of of, um, being autonomous is in some ways that they miss and cannot see the stories that they grow up in that trap them and hold them in a certain space. Mm -hmm. So um, I I remember... um, one of my friends was very um, is gay and she was very heavily involved in the uh, gay marriage situation quite a while back. It is quite a while back now, isn't it? Is it four or five years ago, something like that? Longer, I think, even, yeah. Is it? Yeah. Um, but one of the things that we ended up talking about was is that the journey of life in Australian society, from her point of view, was that there were certain things that you you did or you were entitled to as part of the journey of being an Australian citizen and mm-hmm. marriage, getting married was like one of those things. And, and she was very, um, she felt disenfranchised because she wasn't able to be part of that mm-hmm. story in Australia. And I think that's the thing. And I'm not saying that, that, that those stories are good or bad. I'm just saying that the stories are things that we don't even notice about how we yeah. want to live our life, that, that we should own a home, that we should go to university, that we should do this, that we should do that. Yeah. And every, every time I hear the word should, I hear people not being able to choose. Yeah. Okay. So, so autonomy from that point of view ultimately shows that when people think they should have something or mm-hmm. something should be something, mm-hmm. then um, I listen to them being trapped in a story of some sort. And yeah. it's certainly... I'm not sure how it shows up for you, but from my point of view, um, it's one of the trigger words that I listen for in coaching. Absolutely. Yeah. The, 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 the have, wonderful model operator of necessity. Have to, must, or to, should. Yes. Yes. All that. What a would happen friend. if you didn't? 
Oh. It was a good question. A, a friend of mine many years ago you t- coined the term masturbation, which I just love. Which. <laughs> Well, it's, I think it's the difference between what's also, I mean, to throw another word into the mix, um, you, we call, you would call it self-government or self-determination, but it's also the self-referencing, mm. the ability to look and say, who am I referencing here at the moment? Am I referencing other people and their belief system, or am I actually referencing myself and what I know is good for me and what works? Mm. Um, but yeah. a lot of the time, we don't do that. We just reference other people and we go, and, and I love the sentence structures one should or um, people ought to or um, everybody must you know like really yes well and it also points to me for, for me it points to a sense of not having control and ultimately then autonomy is about feeling in control isn't it control mm-hmm. of your own own world in some ways which then begs the question what are we actually in control of yeah well that's um, the big question, isn't it? it? It is the big question indeed. And, and um, I certainly have a view that most of what we do is habitual. And it can be argued that when we're in habit, we're not actually in control. We're just mm-hmm. doing automatically what we always do. Mm-hmm. And so um, for me, the idea of control lies in self-awareness and cho- choice. So actually having that awareness that you're pointing to, that you live in that idea of, okay, what's going on for me? How am I seeing this? And then what do I want to choose with some level of intention? Mm-hmm. Um, and ideally, when you do that over time, you can generate new habits that are yes. aligned with the yes. sort of person that you want to be and the sort of way you want to live, live okay. your life. So since we're already on choice and, and freedom, can you have freedom of choice without autonomy? Yes, from my point of view, you can. Mm. Um, it's the you want to watch channel one or channel two right <laughs> well and indeed like as long as there's no one else around you yeah. you have freedom of choice and, and so no one else can impact that yeah you, you could argue that you always have uh, i mean victor frankl's famous for his stay in i think it was in auschwitz certainly mm-hmm. one of the, the german concentration camps and basically hanging on to meaning Yes. Um, through all of that. And, and he, he pretty much, as I understand it, I guess the paraphrase was saying that um, they, can, they can take my freedom away, they can take a whole lot of things away from me, but they can't take away how I make sense of something. I can yeah. choose to how I make sense of stuff, something. Yeah. And I think that sort of becomes part of the key is that, that you can work out how to do that. But it comes back to what we were talking about just a little bit earlier which is um, if people are just caught up in having the answers all the time, they never practice learning, asking questions. And, and mm-hmm. self-awareness is born of questions. Mm-hmm. A- and I'm sort of such a strong believer that um, we can do so much better in society by helping people learn how to ask their own questions in some way. How to and, think rather than what to think. Yeah. Indeed. And, 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 I mean, even to go a step further, mm. to to go through the idea that um, that when we are educating people through our um, school systems, etc., that in many ways what we're seeking to do is um, not just make them part of the economy, but part, make them part of a society. I, I think that these days our mm. education systems are geared around helping people get a job and a career yeah. and and all that sort of stuff to be part of the economy but we don't really do a great job of teaching people how to be self-aware, how to be emotionally productive in terms of the work that you do, um, how to learn, how to learn, how to learn how to good, have good relationships. Um, I mean, coaching in, in many ways is pretty straightforward. It's about having effective conversations with people yeah. and we don't teach people how to have effective conversations yeah. in life. So um, for me, when it comes down to choice, choice is very much about um, self-awareness to be able to actually go, hang on a minute, I am about to do something that I always do. I want to do something else. Yeah. Um, and how do you work that out? And then you come back into the, the question of the, the assumptions, I guess the assumptions that people make. And it's one of the things that we do in our work, isn't it, Angela? We sort of coaching 101, challenge the assumptions. Yes. And, <laughs> and I think in a lot of ways, that's what we end up doing. We, we end up challenging the assumptions that people live within and that then opens them up mm. 
uh, to new new options and new choices in some ways. It's just it's just really hard. I mean, like I I know that there it's it's kind of saying to a fish notice the water, you know. I mean, the education system is when we're talking about an, an, an economic um, education, you know, to to it's it's not about creating your life within an economy that you design to work for you. It's fitting into an economy that you're supposed to work for. Mm. So there's not, there's there are only limited choices to a certain degree because then you get into the shoulds. You should have a job by this age. You should be married. You should have, you should have. And it's about fitting into all of that. And when somebody challenges that, it can get very uncomfortable. I mean, mm. I certainly know that that was the case for me because I mean, I changed countries and careers so many times that my parents went, oh God, she's changing countries and careers again. Until they came to the point where they went, okay, fine, you do whatever you want. And I said, yeah, absolutely. Because, and that was my autonomy. And I differentiate that between freedom and autonomy. It was the, I don't, I don't need your approval. You don't, you know, you don't, you can completely disagree with me about the choices that I'm making. That's perfectly okay. And, mm. and I always encourage the people that I work with to say, it doesn't mean that you have to totally go, oh, it doesn't matter what you think. The people around me, it doesn't, it's completely irrelevant. But it's about saying, does this fit with my own values? And does this create happiness and fulfillment for me? Or does this mean that I now fit into a group of people and everybody is happy because I'm part of the system? Mm, yes. Did, did people push back at you about that? Sometimes. Well, you'd have the same thing, don't you? People going, yeah, but I can't live without the people around me. And I need to, you know, and this is the thing. This is my, my sense is when I, and I say this to people and I work with them, you, when you make changes, be prepared that people, things and places that no longer serve you will fall away. And mm. people will come back and say, you know what? I made a choice. I'd rather fit in than make those choices where I'm then eventually I have to let go of these things. And that's, mm. you know, as far as I'm concerned, that's, that's fair enough. Well, I, I'm, one of the reasons that I decided to end up doing some work these days with people in their 20s is because mm. I think that they're in that transition between being the child and being the independent adult. Yes. And I, over the years, I've come across so many people I've, I've worked with who are in their 40s, um, who, who have the things that they thought they wanted to have, mm. but are unhappy. Yeah. And, and for so many of them, I guess the way I frame that up is I think about them as as still living a teenage dream of life yes what they what they actually learnt as kids about how life should be um mm -hmm. and, in, and for many of them it was the acquisition of things you know mm -hmm. find find a partner have kids have a house have a good yeah. job it was all about possession yeah in some ways and from my point of view it sort of it's end up it, it ends up being about experience so yeah. the things that we absolutely can choose um potentially with a whole lot of practice and learning and et cetera, but we, we can explore on who we want to be as a human being. Mm -hmm. We can, we, we can seek to create our way of being in life yeah. and do what, as much as we can to work towards that. Having said that, we also have to fit in with other people around us. Don't we, we, we live yeah. in relationship with other people and that always is going to mean compromise yeah. to some degree. Um, but I've sort of, I've ended up in life believing that um, it's it's far more powerful to seek out the people who nurture you than the people who just happen to be around you. Yeah. Um, and the one of the key things for me about being autonomous is is self belief, mm -hmm. and this idea that you, at some point you have to learn to believe in yourself. And there are far too many people in the world who um, don't develop that self-belief and from my point of view that actually starts with other people believing in you parents believing in you and mm -hmm. and teachers believing in you and and friends believing in you but there but in this world there are so many people who end up telling you what you cannot be as opposed mm -hmm. to helping you work out who you yeah. want to be it's finding the middle ground of guiding somebody and saying you have you know here are here are some options that you've got available and then helping them not make the right one because there is no right one but but hopefully finding one that works for them and being open to the fact that they may choose something else along the way and again that's i think that's the, the, the yeah that middle ground of you know i'm helpful but i'm not controlling and the same thing goes on the other hand i'm listening and i'm still making my own decisions so finding that you know it's a, it's a fine line um 
it is. I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the other thing that, that's there for me too is just that um, it comes back to that idea of the answer and, and people seek certainty. So basically they're seeking certainty in mm. life rather than thinking about how do you navigate the uncertainty of life. Yeah. Uh, it might sound like a picky little difference, but for me it's actually quite huge because generally what I find through my work is that people struggle to learn how to or struggle to navigate uncertainty. Mm. They want the answer. They ha- they desperately want the answer. And in, in many ways, the the um, the bigger issues in the world today are people seeking simple answers to complex problems. Yeah. And yeah. there are those who are happily tell them an answer, but they're not telling the day- answer for the good of those people. They're telling them the answer for the yeah. good of themselves. Do this one day course with me, and your life will magically transform. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. yes, and but even politics, you know, the the big political nation statements and the myths of, of um, for example, American exceptionalism or the, the wonders of the British Empire or mm. whatever else big narratives that we want to go back to because they make us feel powerful and strong yeah. by being part of something. And I think a lot of that also then stems from um, the inability of people to learn how to make good choices in life to learn to be autonomous. Yeah. And being autonomous actually means making meaning for yourself. And we don't help as a society generally help people learn how to make meaning for ourselves. Yeah. We, so what I'm, what I'm, if I'm, if I just, I think that we're both on that page is that with autonomy comes great responsibility. <laughs> and, <laughs> and basically it also means that um, you have to be learn to be uncomfortable and not have the answers and look for the questions and be possibly and, and possibly piss people off around you because you're making choices that they don't agree with. I mean, if I can mm. put it that way and then be happy with the choices you've made, even if, if it means that you change, change them later. But at the moment you're making a choice that works for you. Yeah. I think the, the key, key in all of that is that there is no right answer to yeah. stuff. Yeah, there exactly. is just, good answers that you make at the moment based on what you know. Exactly. And that, that answer may prove to not necessarily be the correct one further down the track to sort of talk about it in that way. It, 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 it may not work out as you thought it was going to work out. Mm. But, but if you're navigating uncertainty, that, that's part of the expectation. You may need to change course yeah. or you may need to do something else. But you're living in the question of how things are working. You're living from my point of view, you're living in feedback loops of meaning, that you're yes. always living with this idea of what does this mean? Okay, what do I do next? Where am I going? And, and it's almost like you're looking toward, looking to getting towards um, sort of the big hit, um, hill in the, in the distance, but you don't have to have a specific route to get to mm. that hill. You're just going step in the general step. direction. Yeah, in the general A journey direction. of a thousand miles, whatever the saying is. That I yeah. think is a good place to 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 finish this conversation. I mean, I know we are going to continue that, but um, thank you, Chris, and thank you everybody for watching. And um, yeah, keep exploring what autonomy means for you. And um, I'll see you next week. Thank you. Mm-hmm.